Daka Braka is not their father's Ukrainian folk band. With their global rhythms and instruments, theatrical influences and costumes, and mix of blues, trance, and opera that give old Ukrainian folk songs new relevance. Daka Braka loosely translates into give and take, and they're taking on their generation's greatest threat to Ukraine's culture. The day the Russians invaded, the group took what they could and fled like thousands, now millions of other Ukrainian refugees. They're giving back to the Ukrainian war effort by continuing to tour and perform, drawing attention to the war and assault on their culture. Daka Braka pianist, vocalist, and percussionist Irina Kovalenko fled Ukraine with her husband five years ago. He said that history tends to repeat itself, and he was convinced that it's a matter of time when Russia will start the war against Ukraine. When not touring with the band, she lives in the Seattle area, <laughs> where her daughter Sofia was born. Irina had been working to get her mother out of Ukraine and to Seattle since they were last together near Kyiv the day the war broke out. Feel the silence with your music, feel it today to tell our story. While Ukrainian President Zelensky was remotely rallying the music community at the Grammy Awards, Daka Braka was kicking off their U.S. tour in a series of performances in the New York area. We're horrified at what the Russians are doing to these wonderful people. So we kind of wanted to come and show solidarity for the culture. In Seattle, progressive rock station KEXP's Derek Mazzone first introduced Daka Braka to American audiences with this 2015 studio performance. It quickly went viral on YouTube, catching the attention of major festival bookers from Bonnaroo to South by Southwest. It transcends many things. It's, they're definitely representing their culture. They're representing their nation, but they're also a theatrical band. They're also a band for the time where they're not trying to emulate a Western style. They have created their own particular vibe. Hello, we are Dach Abracha, and we are happy to greet you from Dach Theater in Kiev, Ukraine. Traditional Ukrainian folk singers by training, a theatrical artistic director transformed them into an avant-garde performing arts group. One of the labels I like most that I've heard is this uh, punk folkloric. San Francisco Jazz Center's artistic director, Randall Klein, was one of the first U.S. music venues to regularly feature them over the years. When you get to the end of the concert and they're talking very explicitly about, you know, the problem they have, uh, the, the Russian problem they have, you know, trying to really squash their culture, you know, you're totally there w with them. And, you know, this time you really will be there with them. Peace and love. No war. Stop Putin. Thank you so much, San Francisco, forever Our mission is to ask people for help. Every country we're going to go to, we're going to ask people to help right now as Ukraine is going through this, but also afterward when we have to rebuild our country. What do you want the audience to feel? Ukraine that Ukraine as a country has a place on this earth to exist. They've previously performed the soundtrack for this 1930s silent film, memorializing the suffering of an estimated three to five million Ukrainian farmers who died during the Holodomor, starting in 1933, when Stalin confiscated Ukrainian food supplies during Russian's famine. The now destroyed eastern Ukraine city of Mariupol was where Daka Braka played in the city's annual week-long music festival in venues throughout the city. It's a clear message that it's a war, it's not a conflict, how a lot of places and people still call it. It's a genocide against Ukrainians. They have joined forces with other Ukrainian pop stars in exile, like Jamala from Crimea. She won a Eurovision Song Contest with her song about the Russian forced deportations in Crimea in 1944. I'm super curious to see how that's going to be 
part of the arsenal of the Ukrainian culture, of Ukrainian people, to push against uh, the war that's happening right now. I believe that our songs, our art, will be our weapon. The combination of the music, the war, and Americans looking for an emotional release and ways to get involved in Ukrainian causes has sold out their cross-country tour. Each show ends the same as their shows before the war, with a message that Americans can finally comprehend. Peace and love, no Russian aggression. Thank you so much. For PBS NewsHour Weekend, Mike Saray reporting.